Hey, listeners, welcome back to another episode of The Robin Graham Show. I have a question for you. Are you working nonstop? Do you work Monday through Friday? Find yourself in the office on the in the evenings and then on the weekends too, to the point where you're frustrated, you're burnt out, and you're not signing clients effectively because you don't have processes in place. If any of those things fit you or describe you this week, you are in the right place at the right time because I have a great guest for us today and we are going to talk all about the importance of having systems and processes in place so that in the event you have an emergency, you've got a backup plan and that backup plan is in systems and processes so that someone else can step in and take over or you can do the thing by a click of a button. So without further ado, I'm going to bring on Casey Ackerman. Casey, welcome to the Robin Graham Show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I am happy to have this conversation. I (laughs) am a little bit of a systems and processes geek, and I like simplified as much as possible. I know I've talked a little bit on the show before about E-Myth Revisited, which is a book by Michael Gerber, and I will put the link to that in the show notes. But it's one of those books that when I first started my business, I read it and I was like, oh, dang. This is brilliant because it's all about having those systems and processes in place so that if you need to hire someone, you don't have to spend hundreds of hours trying to train them. Everything's documented. Everything is systematized and organized and someone can step in. The same thing, which I know we're going to dive into a little bit about, is that when that emergency situation arises... Nobody plans for an emergency, right? That's why it's called emergency. So we're going to dive into the importance of having all these things in place so that you can function in your business, you can sign clients with ease, and you can grow and scale without all of the stress and heartache and time on the weekends and inundating yourself with hours and hours of work. So Casey, with all of that said, I'm so happy you're here. Will you tell the listeners just a little bit about you, where you're from, and how you got into the work that you're doing today? Yeah, of course. So again, my name's Casey. I'm the owner of Casey Ackerman LLC. I live in Idaho with my husband. And really what pushed me into this was COVID, actually. So my business started in 2020. I was furloughed, and I did not like that someone else controlled my financial stability, basically. So I replaced my income by the time they wanted us to come back to work. I said, no, thank you. And here I am now. So two and a half years later, I quickly fell in love with systems and processes. I'm very type A analytical type person. And so I immediately was like, oh my gosh, this is my life. Like I, I live for this stuff. So I quickly dived into becoming an expert in that. And that's what I help with today. So yeah. I think a couple of things you just said, I love the fact that you recognize what your strengths are and you found something that you're passionate about and you can use your passion and use your skills to do something that's worthwhile, not only for yourself, but for other people. It's a great combination. So let's talk about systems and processes and procedures. I think a good place to start is when people come to you and let's just say straight up, you guys, Casey works primarily with ClickUp, which is one of these tools, systems that you can use to organize your business and all of the details, create all these systems and processes in one place. So we're going to talk a little bit about that, but I just wanted to put that out there that case that's who Casey primarily or the tool that Casey primarily works with. But Every single thing we're going to be talking about today is applicable across the board, no matter what system you have. Maybe you're already a Trello user or an Asana user. That That's not to say you need to switch, but what we are saying is that in order to truly grow and scale your business, especially if you're just starting out, you need to have all of these systems and processes documented, and a tool like this is going to help you. But we're not here to do a commercial for ClickUp. So Casey, what are the like say top problems people come to you for that they're not able to grow and scale because they don't have XYZ processes in place. Yeah. So I would say off the top of my head, one of them would be they are drowning, but they don't know what to do about it. They just know that they are over capacity. They want to hire, but they're scared because they don't have the 
even capacity to, as you said before, train them. So there's that piece of it. There's also the piece where they are missing deadlines, dropping the ball. They will use a notebook to like jot down their stuff. And unfortunately they, and they've told me this, they're like when I flip the page, I forget about it. So I see that a lot. Another thing too, is using more than one tool. So what I mean by that is you are utilizing maybe Trello and Asana, or like you're doing one process for your social media in Google Drive, but another process in your project management tool. And like you said, simplify. So for me, less is more. That's super, super important when it comes to systems, especially if you're trying to scale your business. You need very specific processes and systems of how you run your business. So literally anybody could come in and support you if you're out or if you just don't want to be inside your business all the time anymore and you want to truly scale. So those are the big pieces that I see. And oftentimes they come to me and they're like, I don't know what I need. I just can't do this anymore. That's it. I love that. And back in the day when I first started, I was guilty of that. And I'm still guilty of using a notebook. But the good thing is that my planner becomes that source for me with the online calendar, Google calendar, and my paper planner, I can keep it all together. I think it's important to note that even having deadlines, you need to have a process for documenting those deadlines. Work yes. backwards and put those things on your paper planner or notebook if that's what you're using, and then set those reminders on the electronic device yeah. to give me those yes. reminders. But yeah, I didn't have all these systems and processes in place at first. And I quickly realized like, gosh, if you don't document them up front, it takes forever to train someone else. And that time is of essence. Okay. So we talked about the things that people can identify with when it's time to adopt a program or something to use, a system to use, to keep themselves mm -hmm. organized. What are some of the disadvantages to not being organized in your business? And I think you touched on the overwhelm, you touched on, you feel like you're drowning, you're working way over capacity, but I'm sure besides burnout, there are a couple of other things, right? Yeah. So a big one I have seen in my two and a half years or whatever of helping people is they are sacrificing time with their family and friends and they are sacrificing like going to their daughter's ballet recital or having dinner with your family every night or just pieces like that. And also they have come to me and said, I'm just not present with anything outside of my business. I'm just so into my business and so all the time, just my business that it's like I can't focus on anything else. Another thing too is they they just can't scale. They just can't. So they are literally stuck in this vicious circle of, I have this deadline and then this one and then this one and then this one. And it just keeps going and going. And that really hinders your business because when are you going to work on your business to find ways to scale? You can't. So the scaling piece of it, but then the personal side of it, of just, I would probably say that 90% of people did not start a business or leave their corporate or nine to five to then create another corporate or nine to five situation. And a lot of them are in that. And it's just, like I said, they're back to the not present, sacrificing that time, not volunteering at their kid's school, stuff like that. So now that we've identified all those things, what are the first few things that they should look at to systematize and organize so that they can grow and scale? And I would imagine if you don't have like your onboarding process automated or your offboarding process automated, it can be so time consuming and cumbersome to do all of that every single time somebody new comes on. And I think if the process isn't in place, and I'm, of course you get frustrated and burnt out, but your clients or potential clients, if there's a process in place for discovery calls or any of that, your emails you're sending them, if all of that is discombobulated or it feels chaotic, you're less likely to sign clients. Yes, 100%. And systems are just as much about you as they are your clients, because the moment you give your client a stellar experience, they are going to remember that and they are going to tell other people. But if you are all over the place and say, oh, I'll send that invoice to you tomorrow and it doesn't go out for three days, they're like, okay, when are we going to start? And they remember those things. They remember, oh, she's really slow with her timing or whatever. So the first thing you have to do is build, like you said, a process for your offers. So literally from start to finish, how you're going to get them on a call and how you deliver your product and then or service. And then also 
how you offboard them and automate as much of that as you can. Looking into either a CRM system or a PM tool to have those tasks laid out for you anytime a new client says yes, because we are, we're all in business. We're obviously here to make money. That is part of this business. And if you can't do that, there's a problem. So that'd be the first thing is seriously like setting up your onboarding, offboarding, and also how you deliver it, figuring out how much time that takes. And sometimes it does take a couple times to do the service or whatever it may be that you are doing for that client to really figure out the timeline. But once you do systemize it, and do the same way every single time. And if that means that you are going to get out your notebook and write down like, okay, this step takes me a whole day. This step takes me 30 minutes. So you have that for the next client that says, yes, I want this service. Exactly when you need to tell them you'll have something to them by and also how much time you need to block off in your calendar to not say yes to another client, but then say, hey, I have availability starting in two weeks or what have you. The other piece of that is... If you are a pen and paper person, I know a lot of people are, still have the electronic side. So Robin, you mentioned that you have your electronic side and your pen and paper, and I preach that to everybody. So if you don't love having a project management tool, that's totally fine, but at least have the planner and then like Google Calendar or something to give you those due dates to remind you like, oh yeah, I wrote that down a few days ago and now it's here reminding me that I have that due today. Yeah. And I can speak from experience because I've got my podcast manager and then she also does a lot of assistant work for me and I could not survive without her, but we have, we do have a tool in place so that we can, we get everything in there and everything scheduled. So then we don't have to go back and forth. Oh, we're doing this interview this week. Do we have this questionnaire? Has this person filled out the questionnaire? And do we have all the contact information to then send the assets after the show goes live and everything's in one place. It's a click of a button to see everything, the schedule and the contact information, all that stuff is in one place. And it saves so much time. The more you can automate it, your business, the easier it's going to be. And the less you're going to feel like you're spinning in circles. And yes. there are a lot of things. I think Casey, let's tell everyone you used a lot of acronyms like CRM and a couple of others. Let's tell PM, I think was another one. Tell everybody what those mean, just in case they really are truly new to the online space. Let's give them a little bit of wherewithal what we're talking about. Yeah, of course. So CRM is client relationship management. So different tools like that are going to be Dubsado, HoneyBook, 17 Hats, Entreport, things like that. A PM tool is project management tool. So those are going to be ClickUp, Asana, Trello, Monday, Notion. I am a firm believer in utilizing both of those because they serve very different purposes. So your Client relationship management, CRM, is going to serve the onboarding and offboarding process. That's going to automate your emails. That's going to automate your invoices. That's going to automate your schedule. All of those pieces are all in one place. And then you have the PM tool for what you are actually being paid to do. And also that PM tool will help you on your actual business side as well. So both of them are very important. Yeah, I agree. And I think there are some systems that actually have them all under one umbrella now. There are, um, yeah. Yeah, so that's even better. But okay, so that gives us a little bit of, of an idea of what those things are and how you can utilize each one and or both, which both makes the most sense, right? Yeah. So let's talk about when you're going to set up processes for your business, what are the first ones that you should establish? I would say the first ones you should establish are your day-to-day -day tasks. So anything that is recurring, make sure that it is set up as reminders, but then also building a SOP, which is a standard operating procedure for that, because you can then audit yourself and say, I don't need to be doing over half of these tasks anymore. And then you can say, I'm going to hire some support. And the best part about that is you will not spend hours and hours training them because you put together all of your recurring tasks in one area, you also put together the operating procedure of how to do those tasks. And now when you hire somebody, you can just say, here are your tasks and that's it. So that's one of the first things I would say you absolutely need to do in your business. The second piece is thinking about like your marketing. So going into how you want your marketing to look and also the process of what you want to do. And a lot of times people are scared of the word system or process. And I want to just state that it's nothing to be scary about. I love using the analogy of your morning routine. That is a process. So you get up, 
you brush your teeth, you take your shower, you eat breakfast and so forth. That is a process. And so just thinking about the steps it takes to complete a task, that's what you need to write out. And so that when you hire, it will help, you know, that person train themselves basically. So that's probably the first thing. And then going into probably your marketing and figuring out what you want that process to look like and seeing the pieces that you can probably have your assistant do, which would be a big one is just like scheduling out stuff and maybe even creating some graphics if they're good at design. So just starting to really audit yourself and understand, okay, I can build processes for all of these things and then I don't have to do them anymore. Yeah. And there's so much to be said for that. It does save so much time. When I was doing photography is when I really got into this because my entire booking process was was automated. And then proofing everything was so easy on the back end because it was all automated through a CRM and alleviates so much space on my calendar and stress of going back and forth on emails. And I think even if you don't have a calendar app and a lot of the CRMs now have a calendar app, like you can actually do things in such a simplified way so that your follow-up, your questionnaires, all of that can be done with one, you sending them a calendar link and then you're done. And all you have to do is wait until the time comes to actually meet with them in person. If you do have that process of, if your sales process includes a discovery call, like having that calendar in place, it's just automating that, getting the information up front. So you don't have to go searching around online, trying to dig through the weeds to find out what information you need to know about this person that you're going to help or serve. So much good stuff here, Casey. So I would love for you to tell just briefly, you have experienced this firsthand and there's a reason you're so incredibly passionate about it. You loved it before, but then you went through a lot in 2021 that really hit this home for you in terms of really solidifying the need for all of these processes and systems so that people can simplify their life, but also run on autopilot. Yeah. So 2021 was the year of events <laughs> for me. Very quickly run down. I had emergency surgery and was in the hospital for a week. I got married. I moved out of state from California to Idaho. And then I was diagnosed with cancer and had three surgeries and had three to four appointments every week for three months. I was, needless to say, not very present in the year of 2021 when it came to my business. And It would not be here today if I did not have those systems and automations and processes in place and also a stellar team member, obviously they, she was amazing and stepped up and, but it was easy for her because we had all of this in place. She knew exactly what she needed to do when she needed to do it and how to do it to where I could fully step. I love that so much. And like I mentioned in the intro, we don't know when an emergency is going to happen. We can't plan for that. We can't plan for when our kids are sick. We can't plan for a natural disaster. We can't plan for illness or death and, or even just something that comes up in the day where you've got to be somewhere that you didn't have on your calendar and now can't do X, Y, Z. So I think that's such a great example. And I'm so glad you're doing as well as you are and that you're here with us today because what a blessing that thank you. cancer is such a scary thing. So thank God you're okay. And you're still thriving and doing such a great job to, to serve and help other people as well. I love it. Um, All right. So as we begin to close out this episode, can you share just one last major tip that you think every entrepreneur who's starting a business needs to know in order to be able to grow and scale? Yeah. Start your system sooner than you think, meaning like it should be one of the first things that you do because If you try to do it once you are so crazy, busy, and burnout, the overwhelm will just hit you and then it will be a vicious circle again of, I need these systems, but I don't have time to do them and so forth. So start your systems today, right now. Absolutely. (laughs) And don't think that you can just hire someone to do systems for you because it has to be done the way your brain thinks and works, because that's how you're going to best serve your clients. Yes. You need to know your process before you hire somebody to support you with your processes. Yes. I think that is so key. Casey, thank you so much for being here. As we mentioned, you use ClickUp. 
And if you want to put in a quick plug for ClickUp, that's awesome. I don't mind that one bit. I'd be happy to put a link in the show notes to, or we will absolutely put a link in the show notes to all of your contact information. But if there's something special about ClickUp that you want to share, go ahead and share that as well. Yeah. So I get this question a lot and I actually don't answer it because it's not the tool that's important. It's the one that you're going to use that's important. Mm -hmm. And I love ClickUp because it works for me and I do believe that it could work for everybody, but that doesn't mean I'm right. (laughs) So I just wholeheartedly believe in finding the system or tool that works for you and something you're going to use. I will say I see a lot of people outgrow other project management tools where ClickUp allows you to grow with it. If that's the plug, then I guess that's the plug. But for the most part, just find the one you like and use it and automate it and love it. (laughs) That's awesome. All right, listeners, if you are in the market to have someone help you organize your business on the back end to make things streamlined and so much easier and save you a lot of stress. And really when you're, when you do this, you are saving yourself, not only time, but you're saving yourself a lot of money and energy too. So that, I think that's important to know, but if you're ready for that, now is the time don't delay it. No matter what phase you are in your business, there's always a system or process that you can implement that's going to help you out. Casey, where can the listeners find you, learn more from you, connect with you? Yeah. So I am very active on Instagram. And so my handle is just Casey Ackerman. Also, my website will give you all the details on how to work with me or sign up for my email list, all that stuff. But I love fostering connections through Instagram. Find me there. I will put the link to that in the show notes for sure. Listeners, thank you for being here. Thank you for staying till the end of this episode. There was a lot of value here and I highly encourage you to take those steps to systematize your business. I think you'll be much, much happier in the long run and you'll scale faster as well. If you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a rating and review. That is how we are able to reach more listeners. And like Casey said, join her email list for valuable tips and resources. And the same thing for me. If you haven't already subscribed to my email list, I send out at least two emails a week, but they are not spam. They always have value. The first one is on Mondays, and that is for a basically, I guess a journaling prompt for the week is what you could call it. And it is proving to be quite valuable for many people. It's really inspiring people and to change your mindset and not only grow their businesses, but really transform their lives as well. And then I always send out a weekly business tip as well. So be sure and subscribe to my email list. Be sure to subscribe to Casey's email list and you'll have lots of joy coming into your email box. And (laughs) if you want any free resources, be sure to hit up the show notes because all the links will be there for you as well as all of Casey's information. Until next time.